Another case in online post-practice update from Derek Young and Matt Hall. Today, we're going to show you snapshots of the practice we're at this morning and intersperse some quotes from K-State's coaches in this brief little video. I am joined, like I said, by Derek Young. As always, everything we do, which is KSO show type related, is presented by the Tallgrass Tap House, as is this post-practice update. Derek, you were there this morning. Nice morning before it got hot this afternoon. Just walk me through some thoughts and practice. Let's start offensive side, some things you noticed on offense today at practice. Sure, looked like uh, we might have seen Nick Oss take the second uh, quarter, uh, second team quarterback uh, reps, and instead of John Holcomb, which I think it's still probably a tight race, and I don't think uh, anyone's really ready to call it for anyone. But Oss seems uh, slightly ahead at this point. James Gilbert seemed like he might have got a first team rep at running back. Yep. So those two things popped out to me, and. And it's funny, the first uh, offensive rep we did see, and it wasn't against the defense or anything like that, but it was with three wide receivers as well. It was, and I think the three receivers, as you noted on the board, were Y. King Gill, Dalton Schoen, and Malik Knowles. I'll probably leave some of that stuff for your post on the board too. Um, the, the day was about defense, though, not because the practice was focused on defense, but our availability was really heavy on the defensive side. All defensive coaches after being offensive last week First one we spoke to today was safeties coach Joe Klanderman. Doesn't necessarily coach the Nichols all the time, but he had great things to say about Jaron McPherson. Yeah, that'll be the starter if the season started today, which is pretty pretty big departure from what we just heard a couple of weeks ago when from head coach Chris Kleiman when he mentioned it would be Jonathan Durham. So at that uh, position battle, so to speak, is going back and forth a little bit, but uh, a lot. Probably still be to be determined, but I like Mc, but McPherson's ahead at this point. Interesting for sure, and like you said, very different. Here is the exact quote from Joe Klanderman on the safety, excuse me, the Nichols today, including Jaron McPherson. Right now it's Denzel, Goolsby, uh, Wayne Jones, and Jerron McPherson as the nickel. Um, but, I mean, it's interchangeable parts by and large. I mean, you'll see John Alexander in there with that group a little bit. You're going to see uh, John Durham in there with that group a little bit. You even see Ross Elder in there. So those would be the top six in my mind right now. What's Jaron McPherson done to earn that opportunity? He's a, he's a really good uh, player in man technique, which at, at, at our nickel spot with what we do, that's something that's going to be very important. And uh, really slippery blitzer, uh, really understands what we're doing, great communicator, mean total package. Derek, another name at safety you've talked about uh, forever for us at KSO. And Coach Klanderman talked about today, which you can see on the video, uh, which is up separately than this. Also praised Wayne Jones a lot. You know, a redshirt freshman that's not only going to be a starter, but a guy he really looks at as, as a leader and somebody who can line guys up in that backfield for him. They certainly talk about him, not just Coach Klanderman, but even Coach Hazleton, Coach Klyman. They talk about him like he might be one of the best players on their defense, if not the entire team. He was, I, I call him, he was the darling of spring football too. They talk, they raved about him at that point. So uh, he's someone they're, they're going to rely on heavily. And I think they anticipate him being one of their best players. At least that's the way they talk about him. And the only concern, or at least maybe a little bit of a reservation and coach Klanerman noted it today is that he hasn't been in the fire before. He hasn't taken a lot of meaningful game reps. Um, he was in, I think a couple games last year when he preserved his red shirt um, when the game was yep. out of hand and when you put in the reserves. But he hasn't been in a lot of one on first team versus first team situations, actually none at this point. So that'd be the one reservation still left to be determined when it comes to him. I would say we got a lot of clarity in the secondary today. The only real surprise, and not that it was a shock, uh, Jaron McPherson's a name we've been sharing on the board now for two weeks is playing that nickel spot with Jonathan Durham. Him being with the ones, you know, a bit uh, is news, you know, for sure. The rest of the starters, though, sounds like Wayne Jones, Denzel Goolsby, A.J. Parker, and Walter Neal at corner. Uh, no real surprises there outside of the nickel spot. No, the, I mean, the one surprise was when we re received the news, probably at the beginning of fall camp, that Walter Neal would be playing almost exclusive, probably exclusively at corner instead of the nickel position where he had played the, the previous few years. So uh, that's not a surprise any longer since we, we kind of had that information. And I think that was more so, and they keep saying it, to get their best 11 on the field. So I think at, the, at least at that point, and probably still to this point, since he, he's still the, at corner, is that they feel better about what they have at nickel in terms of maybe some depth there than maybe the corner spot behind Neil and Parker. Although they he uh, was a coach Malone did start to talk 
about what he did have behind those two guys. And I was going to say that. He mentioned today, I think Keevan McGee was the first name he brought up a couple times. He's probably the third, you know, non-nickel corner. Then maybe Daryl Patterson, Lance Robinson, and even Logan Wilson, a couple of redshirt freshmen and a true freshman there at the end. Van Malone, the defensive backs coach, was available to the media today. He talked a little about what he expects from his corners as far as physicality goes. You, you, we look for size. We look for athletic ability, movement skills. But we, we want a guy who can be physical because the offenses of today, they're going to they're gonna put that soft corner, that cover corner, they're going to put him in the situations where he has to be a physical uh, operator. So uh, I, in our room, one of the first things we said, we don't, we don't want any cowards. And I don't think those guys have, have proven to be that. Now, they're not, they're not neck roll middle linebacker types, but they all will hold their own when asked to be physical at the point of attack. Let's move from the defensive backfield to the defensive line. We heard from both Buddy White, the defensive ends coach, and Mike Tuyasa Sopo, the defensive tackle coach. At end first, Eric, I thought maybe the biggest news was, you know, Bronson Massey back healthy, has been for a little while. Reggie Walker may still have some work to do, but at least he's gotten significantly better, it sounded like. Yeah, it sounded like today might have been his first day being full go since, you know, his, uh, you know, when it, since whenever he did get dinged up. So I think Reggie Walker is finally back to 100%, but even Coach Wyatt admitted they had brought him along a little bit slower. I think it was a little bit of a tweaked ankle or something. So it sounds like that's uh, behind him at this point. And Boom Massey's been back for a little bit longer than Walker. So uh, just the little nicks and dings that they were kind of suffered a couple of weeks ago seem to be behind them. And I think it's probably a position that's back to 100%. It's a position like you've talked about a lot that does have some depth, that does have some quality starters and backups. Since really the injury news is the biggest news at DN, let's just let Buddy White explain to you specifically the latest on Reggie Walker and Bronson Massey. It's good to have them uh, both back out there. Uh, Bronson's been back for for a while now. Uh, Reggie's been kind of working his way back in slowly. Uh, today was a full, his first full day. Uh, he looked good. It looked good to have him out there. Let's wrap up this Monday post-practice report at Case Set Online by talking defensive tackles. Derek, Mike Tuyasa Sopo available to the media today. And I'll be honest, he praised a, a lot of guys. You've talked about the need to find depth behind those three seniors about all the time. Everyone knows about Trey Deshaun and Joe Davies and even Jordan Mitty. But we heard about some of those backups to those guys today. You mentioned them being really important in your defensive story that you wrote for the site, I think, Monday morning. Just thoughts on what uh, Coach Tui had to say about those D tackles. Yeah, I'm curious about the depth of defensive tackle because – uh, quite honestly, it was it was a little bit of a point last year where I didn't think the depth was as high enough quality that they needed. And so when they talk about depth this year, I, I kind of left uh, needing to be convinced a little bit more of what they have behind Trey Deshaun. And he certainly seemed like, at least today, that he was pretty excited about what he has there, not just in Drew Wiley, who, who you imagine will be the backup to Deshaun and Davies, but, and of course, Jordan Mitty too. But he also brought up Eli Huggins right. as perhaps, you know, being the player that out of that entire room that's had perhaps the best fall camp of all of them. So that's interesting. And then you asked about Matthew Polamau, and he was uh, very optimistic about what he'll provide in the future. Probably not this year. It would still surprise right. me to see him see him now, but he he has flashed is, I guess, the word that uh, Coach Tui Asasopo used. I felt the same as you. Very good things about Matthew Polamau, but my gut is still telling me, even though he said he had a great practice today and a lot of praise was still in the future. And you've been trying to tell us about Eli Huggins. You've been heard, heard about him in camp a little bit here and there for the last few weeks. And we'll just give you the exact quote from Coach Tui Asasopo on Eli Huggins and what he's done so far in camp. You count on a young man like uh, uh, Drew Wiley is, is doing a wonderful job here in camp. Eli Huggins has made a move. You know, he's had made, made he, he quite possibly could have had the best camp of the, the entire room. And then you have a young man like Jalen Pickle who's uh, really coming along. And a lot of it to me is just understanding the play. Because, you know, I think uh, Coach uh, Wyatt alluded to, man, that's, those are two different animals, you know, the, the defensive ends and inside the tackles. And so uh, Jalen Pickle's had a nice camp, and we're relying and counting on him to play. That's going to wrap it up for today. Again, as a defensive day after practice for K-State tomorrow, Derek will talk with head coach Chris Kleiman for the first time since his opening press conference. It'll be nice to catch up with him on what's going on in the program, big picture. Yeah, I guess we'll have some things to maybe clarify and confirm when it comes to a few guys that are a little bit limited uh, still to injury and maybe perhaps out so that he'll be able to clarify and make note of some of those definitively and just hear his uh, thoughts on how everyone's progressed since the last time we spoke with him. He was 
you know, pretty optimistic about a few freshmen, but he was still a little bit reserved at that point. We hadn't seen a whole lot of football then, but we have now. So it, camp will be wrapping up soon, and they'll be start wrapping up or start to begin to prepare for Nichols. Or, yeah, is Nichols the first game? Correct. Yeah, yeah Nichols is the first game this Number season. Number 11, over. like you said, in the first uh, FCS AP poll today, I believe, right? Yeah, so fall camp will start to close, and they'll start to look ahead and uh, prepare for that game and, and Bowling Green as well. We still have an opportunity for you to take advantage of our of our deal right now on a new annual subscription to Case Online. You get 25% off. It's usually 100 bucks, be 75 right now. I think this deal actually runs till the end of August. Uh, and then you'll get a $75 free Adidas gift card. So we'd love you to do that if you're not a subscriber. If you are, we really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, it doesn't cost you anything. Hit the red subscribe button. It's great for our business, and we appreciate you know, the chance for that. It would also give you notification, notifications, easy for me to say, on video. So for Derek Young and Grant Flanders, who are both out there today, I'm Matt Hall for Case It Online. Tell your friends.